Hi, welcome to 7 Facts. This is the channel that holds the largest collection of facts about every country, state or territory in the world. Before we begin the video, I ask you to click the subscribe button. I upload 3 times a week, every week, so there's plenty of content. Just off the coast of Newfoundland is a collection of islands that are not part of the Canadian province. Saint-Pierre and Miquelon are indeed the last piece of French territory in North America. They are quite distinct from Newfoundland and Labrador and are, for all intents and purposes, a piece of France in America. Technically, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon is an overseas collectivity of France comprised of the islands of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, which was once two separate islands now joined by sand dune land bridges. Ok, there are six more islands, but those are small and uninhabited. Saint-Pierre and Miquelon's population is around 6,000, with the majority of inhabitants descended from Breton, Basque, Normand and Acadian settlers, who originally came to the islands as fishermen. If anything, the history of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon has been tumultuous. As I said, this is the last piece of New France that remains under French control. But they have long been a territory that has been exchanged, sometimes violently so, between the French and the English as they waged conflicts in the larger world. Originally a French settlement, the British took control of the islands in 1713, 1778, 1794, 1804 and 1815, with the French taking back possession between each of these occupations. Eventually, the French took control of the islands once again in 1816, this time permanently. While Saint-Pierre and Miquelon is near Newfoundland, Canada and share its climate and geography, one can be excused for thinking that culturally they will be a lot like their neighbors. Nothing can be further from the truth. When traveling to Saint-Pierre, first of all, you'll go through customs, so don't forget your passport. You'll have to use the Euro and you'll experience French food, wine, music and of course the language. Newfoundland may be the most eastern portion of North America, but Saint-Pierre and Miquelon is, at least culturally, the most western portion of Europe. Saint-Pierre is the capital of the territory. It is one of only two communes or townships on the island, the other one being miquelon langlad Curiously, while Saint-Pierre holds nearly 90% of the territory's population, by area, it is eight times smaller than the other commune. There's not much to say about this cozy little capital, except that it's a charming and quiet place. Oh, and it was an outpost used by Al Capone during the Prohibition, but we'll get to that in the next fact. Smuggling had always been an important economic activity on the island, but it became especially prominent in the 1920s with the institution of prohibition in the United States. At that point, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon briefly became the base of operations for a different kind of commerce. During prohibition, American gangsters, including Al Capone, used Saint-Pierre and Miquelon as the launching point for their liquor smuggling activities and business was good. In 1931 alone, the archipelago was reported to have imported almost 7 million liters of whiskey from Canada to the United States. Unfortunately for the smugglers, the prohibition came to an end in 1933 and it actually plunged the islands into an economic depression. The only time the guillotine was used in North America was in Saint-Pierre in the late 19th century. Joseph Neal was convicted of killing a certain Mr. Coupard on Ile aux Chiens on December 30th, 1888 and executed by guillotine on August 24th, 1889. Neal and a friend of his broke into Coupard's cabin and stabbed him to death. And then, for some reason, because they wanted to know how much fat the victim had in its body, they dismembered him. Because of this, Joseph Neal was sentenced to death by guillotine. The only problem was that the island had no such device. 
so a spare guillotine had to be shipped all the way from Martinique in the Caribbean. A petty local criminal had to be employed to carry out the execution, but he didn't really know when to drop the blade, so in the end, Neil himself had to shout out the order to do it. And then, human flesh was left grotesquely clinging to the dull blade. Obviously, this was the first and last use of a guillotine in Saint-Pierre, and indeed in North America. As I said at the beginning of the video, Miquelon Island is in fact composed of two islands. They are joined together by an isthmus. In the mid-1700s, the isthmus formed from sand collecting in the wrecks that had foundered on the reefs and sandbars between the islands. The waters between Langlade and Saint-Pierre were called the Mouth of Hell until about 1900, as more than 600 shipwrecks have been recorded in that point since 1800. While the isthmus joining the two islands would have formed anyway due to the currents, the multitude of shipwrecks at the bottom of the sea surely helped to speed along the process. These were 7 facts about Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook and Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon, link in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.